All right, we are back here at Fox 61. Thanks for being with us. We are all in this together as a country, as a community, as a state. We've been checking in with mayors all across Connecticut. Right now, I'm happy to have Mayor Aaron Stewart from New Britain back on the phone with me once again. Mayor Stewart, thanks so much. So glad to catch up with you again. And first off the top, I have to say, happy birthday. You celebrated last week, albeit a little bit different. <laughs> thanks so much, Erica. Yes, my birthday was last week, the big... Uh, 33, but it was a little bit different this year. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, like a lot of people are having to celebrate differently. All right, we've got to talk about the latest numbers here. In New Britain, 679 confirmed cases, 51 deaths. How is the city coping? And what are your thoughts on the state's plan? Phase one of the reopen plan that's happening in, in one week now, exactly. So I think, you know, we're, we've continued to see those those numbers rise, um, but, you know, we have to remember that those are cumulative numbers from our first case that go back to March 5th. So when we look and we analyze our data and we look at how many new cases the city has been seeing on a daily basis, um, we've really, we're nothing compared to what we were um, last month with the amount of reported cases. So I don't want to say, you know, we're, we're feeling optimistic. I don't want to say good. Um, um, but it's it's looking better and better. The Hospital of Central Connecticut, which is based in New Britain, also um, has been seeing a decline in their amount of patients that they are caring for that are COVID positive. And we're starting to see an increase in other kind of routine um, care that's coming into the hospital now. So all of these things are, are good signs. As far as the reopening, I know yeah. that we have a lot of businesses that are eager to get back open, and our health department is working diligently to put a lot of measures in place um, and put protective guidelines um, in the hands of all of our local business owners that are planning to reopen so they can do so safely and in accordance with the governor's guidelines. And what are you hearing from businesses there in New Britain? How are they feeling about the plan? I think it's anxious, right? They're anxious, they're frustrated, they want to get back to normal, but they don't know what that new normal is. And they hope that their clientele will come back, um, especially I'm hearing it a lot from our, our restaurant owners. And I think we're all collectively worried about their success moving forward too. Yeah, there is a lot of positive news to focus on here in the state. Also, New Britain, as you were mentioning, hospitalizations, the numbers are going down. Also, a lot of great news talking about thousands of pieces of PPE coming in yesterday there to New Britain to the state commodities warehouse which we are proud to host at the Commodities Warehouse on Hartford Square in New Britain and Syracuse and Moving and Storage, which has been a, a wonderful um, employer in town and Connecticut business, New Britain-based, that's done a great job with facilitating all that. Unfortunately, I wasn't invited to the event yesterday to, to celebrate, um, but we're glad to um, really be the, the host town, and our police department has done a great job at keeping that, that site under lock and key and under constant surveillance, so we're, we're proud to have that here. Mm -hmm. Well, another big New Britain business, Datco, rolling at a rally today in Washington, D.C. for federal government relief. What are you hearing from them? Don DeVivo, the owner of Datco, yes, they are, are fighting um, for to get themselves back on the roads and, and up and running. Um, again, this is all different angles. New Britain, we have such a, a great, vast array of different types of businesses in town. And like I said, the frustration, the anxiety is coming through from all facets of our workforce um, with how do we get back and up and running and how are we going to do so with the necessary support that we need um, from our partners in federal government and our transportation um, companies are, are certainly at the, the forefront of that. Well, Mayor Stewart, when we last talked just a few weeks ago, you had just announced your Thinking Beyond Yourself Award. You just made that announcement. And now fast forward to today, later on this morning, you're announcing the nominees. This is really exciting, highlighting all the good that's happening in the city. 10 o'clock this morning. We we are going to have fun with this one. We're rolling out the red carpet to announce all of the nominees for the Think Beyond Yourself Award. You have to have some fun, right? And so we rolled out the red carpet. I put on a big fancy Oscars-like dress to announce all of the nominees. We're rolling that out on our Facebook pages at 10 o'clock this morning. So I know there will be a lot of excited New Britain residents, and we're glad to tell the positive stories of, of what we've seen and just great acts of kindness in our community. 
All right. Well, good stuff. Glad you lived it up and put on the fancy dress. That sounds really fun and exciting. Again, that's happening at 10 o'clock. All right. Now, the big news yesterday, the announcement from the governor, schools were not going to be back in this in session for the rest of the school year in the classroom. We are all doing homeschooling now. And New Britain has adjusted offering hot spots to students all over the city. Great news there. We have, and we're really grateful for partnering with another local business, um, Shaler Automotive. And I spoke with Art Shaler, and he's really glad to be able to do all that he can um, to help provide access um, to our students who may not have it. So um, we're outfitting the cars with technology, and we'll see how it works. Again, this is putting a, a Band-Aid on a, a much more long-term problem, but I think we know what we have to be moving forward, and I know that our superintendent has recently announced that she wants to put together um, a group of individuals um, to help really pin down how many students do not have any internet access at all. That's a number we still are not 100% sure on. Um, and how can we move forward with getting them access in the future and what that looks like and what it might cost. So we're grateful for that partnership. All right, mom to mom to be time here now. How are you doing? I know we're creeping closer to that July due date when we're going to meet baby mayor, excuse me, baby girl mayor, because we yes. know it's going to be a girl. You and so many other women adjusting the way they do things because your baby shower now it's going to have to be virtual. Get us up to date. I know, Erica, you know, I really got the short end of the stick on this one. My birthday fell in the middle of quarantine. My baby shower was supposed to be May 31st. Bummer. But we're adjusting, um, and I'm happy that I'm healthy, baby's healthy. I'm approaching week 30, um, so I am getting bigger by the day. Um, and I'm really just hoping and praying at this point that the hospitals will be a, a much better place to be in July um, when, when hopefully we go in to meet our, our baby girl. Um, but, you know, it's just that, that anxiety and really taking the extra measures to um, take care of myself and making sure that I'm wearing a mask and, and using all of the hand sanitizer in the world um, and just being careful. And I think there's a lot of other expectant moms out there that are feeling nervous and anxious like I am too. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I said, you're just like so many other expected moms out there also, you know, because everybody's having to do different things differently with celebrations, with not just baby showers, but also weddings, birthdays and anniversaries. But we're glad you're doing well and feeling good and creeping towards that July due date. We're looking forward to meeting baby girl mayor.